One of my favorite uses of programming is through something known as, or building something known as simulations. And the entire idea is we have mathematical models and we may want to ask questions on those models and we have to sort of carefully monitor them the entire time. Well, guess what? That is where we can use something like Python to build simulations, something like uh, approximating things like probability or something known as the Monte Carlo simulation. <clears throat> so at least to start, let's kind of do that quick refresher. You saw this in the previous uh, videos, but the entire idea of approximation, something that is close enough, but not exactly correct. Or if, as we used in our conditional statements, something that is close enough. Okay, well, how could we use something like conditions and uh, loops to do approximation? And so here is a great example of approximation. Well, we've seen this, but something known as Newton's method. Now, if I were to ask you a super simple question, what's the square root of 25? Oh, well, that one's easy. You learned that one in, I don't know when, uh, but you know it's five and you're done. But what happens if I were to ask you something like 50? Oh, well, that becomes a bigger slight issue. You're gonna you know, do in your head math and you're gonna say something like, oh, well, it's maybe like somewhere between seven and eight. Uh, and the issue is because there's no quick and easy way to know the, uh, the square root of 50. But Newton's method, and that's a nice little wiki leak for a uh, Wikipedia link for you. Uh, but the entire idea is this formula will allow you to approximate what that square root would be. Starting with some level of precision. Again, we're just saying when we get close enough. And then we make some initial guess. Well, we know that the square root of 50 is not going to be 1, and 1 squared is 1, so it's wrong. But it gives us that initial base case that, again, we can work off our loop. Just like when we said uh, something like, we'll start with play again equaling yes. Oh, well, it just means start our loop. And then we continue to run through that. So, oh, in this case, our guess is 1. 1 is less than 50. So we ask it to run through this simple question. First, if our guess squared minus n, very similar to what we saw here, if you notice, if that is less than our epsilon, then we are now uh, close enough to our approximation. Then we can do something known as a break. And a break is just saying exit the while loop. You've uh, reached a point where your, your loop doesn't need to continue running. Get out of it. Else, else modify our guess with this new number. So in this case, uh, you know, half times, uh, what is that? Guess, guess was one plus uh, 50 divided by guess. So in that case, uh, take our guess that we have. Uh, and so in this case, 50 divided by one, that's one uh, plus one. That becomes uh, one half times 51. Roughly speaking, uh, what is that? That's like um, half, that's like 25.5. I think that's right. Don't quote me on that. But, okay, well, we would ask that same question again. Is that 25.5 less than n? If it is, then do the entire process again. And 25 uh, squared is definitely too big. It's still outside of our epsilon. So we don't break, but we iterate and refine. And just as you can sort of see, and so you don't have to sort of guess this on your own, Here's this same example. So I take that approximation. And let's say for our sake, I want to uh, approximate our uh, SQRT 50. Now you'll see I'm also going to include new guess. And this is going to just keep an iterative process inside of our while loop, telling us what this guess is 
each time. So if we were to take this and run it, new guess, uh, while guess is less, if yeah, minus squared, ah, mm -hmm. there we go. Now if we run it, uh, let's modify that. There we are. So, oh, okay, good. 25.5 is the uh, what 51 divided by 2 is. But as you can see, well, 25 squared. Uh, 25 squared is way too much. So we then uh, modified the guess to become 13.73. Okay, well, we make the evaluation again. That's still less than 50. We printed that new guess. So now we see that print. Well, we do our calculation, 13 squared. 13 squared is still uh, well above our epsilon, so we skip and we modify our guess again. And we went with uh, 8.6. All right, well, 8.6 squared. 8 squared is roughly 64. You know, whatever the 0.6 adds to that, still too high. Modify it again. So we get to 7.2. 7.2, oh, well, okay, 7 squared is 49, but I guess that 0.2 is adding a little too much. We're, we're not quite there. And so if we modify it, oh, well, we're still not quite there with this uh, 0.0726, but as we continue to refine, you see that we get uh, this 7.710, uh, and if we squared that, We'd see, yeah, okay, well, we look at that, and that's actually very close to our 50. And so, again, we're using the looping structure to approximate and run, in this case, not a simulation, but we're utilizing it to uh, effectively approximate some values for us. <clears throat> now, this is where we can think about something like probability. Let's say, very even simply, we want to just flip a coin. Not even uh, playing with dice yet. I just want to take my coin, and here's my uh, George Washington quarter. Very accurate representation of a quarter. And then uh, I, I think there's a building on the other end. So here's a building to represent my tails. Well, the entire idea here is, again, what's the probability of landing on heads? Okay, well, if we think about that, uh, there's the mathematical way where, oh, you know, well, it's a one in two chance of doing it, and then, you know, you can make that deduction. Or we could actually, once again, use uh, probability and simulations to get that same approximation. So, once again, if we think about this, I now come in and I have two functions, uh, flip coin and dice roll. And I'll focus on just that first one of flipping a coin. Again, I'm going to generate a random number because I don't want to know what the uh, uh, solution would be. It could be heads, it could be tails. But I've made just a simple rule. If it's above a 0 0.5, we're calling that heads, 50% roughly speaking. Uh, and then if it's not, we're calling that tails. So. If I wanted to run a trial of this, num trials, let's say I want to run 10,000 trials. I want to flip that coin 10,000 times. Uh, and then I'm going to also call something total or uh, successful trials or something like that. But basically, this is going to keep track of heads. Every time we roll ahead, we've successfully added to our total number of uh, corrects, and we can do a comparison of that. Okay, so uh, now we'll start. So I, once again, our stepper uh, is going to start at zero, and while I is less than our num of trials, we want to flip a coin. So uh, coin is going to equal flip coin. Again, that's going to flip a coin and either give us heads or tails, okay? If coin is heads, aka 
we land it on the heads, uh, total is going to go plus one. Okay, all right. Last little bit we need to do here is i is going to equal i plus one. i increments the entire time. So if we run through this, okay, we didn't see anything, but let's check out what our total is now. Oh, okay, well, if you see, that's a, a very interesting number, 4,987, very close to uh, 5,000. And the reason why I say that is our, uh, we'll call it probability, would equal our total divided by our num trials, print our probability, probability. And you see, we're very close to 50%. If we ran through that trial again, okay, now we're above the 50%, but you can see we're very, very close. And interestingly enough, if I increased my trials and just now I'm going up an order of magnitude, I'm getting actually very close to that approximation because to go from uh, 51, uh, 50,000 to 51,000, it's actually much more difficult than 5,000 to 501 uh, or 5,100, uh, if you will. But we can do the same thing. Now, instead of doing uh, coin flipping, let's actually go back sort of to our slide and say, well, what's the probability of landing on, uh, here's a die, There's your die. Uh, we'll say that's the one, the two, and the three. What's the probability of rolling a three? Again, yes, mathematically and theoretically, uh, it would be one in six. But once again, we can show that through Python. We can take that same code once again. And now instead of doing flip coin, let's dice roll. Dice roll. And we'll work off of a six-sided die because we're uh, we're not playing D&D &D or uh, any random board game. But, okay, well, die, does that equal three? In our case, we're working off of the three idea here. And just to kind of take a look at dice roll, it's going to generate a random number from one to however many sides plus one. And the reason why is because... Uh, Rand int would go up to six, but not include six. So we are just explicitly going through that. Uh, and then just to sort of take a look at what the one divided by six is. So we're roughly expecting a one, uh, a 0 0.16 uh, as our probability. Okay, so we take it, we run our trials, we don't need that anymore, so I'll just get rid of it. And, okay, let's take a look at what our probability is of rolling a 3. Roughly speaking, 14. Okay, not terrible. Run it again, 14. Run it again, 14. Maybe I don't need that. Yeah, I didn't. My apologies. So, uh, I didn't need the, the plus 1 there. Uh, that was on me. My apologies. Uh, but, as you can see... Now, to roll a three, we can effectively see we are going to get, roughly speaking, 16% each time. We can even go even further. What if I wanted to do something like uh, ask these types of questions? If I rolled five dice, uh, is one, 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 one? One, 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 uh, more random than six, three, one, five, five. Well, they're actually the same because each die roll is independent of each other. And so you could play some mathematical operations of looking at them. But one of the things that we could really look at is something like Pascal. Uh, so Pascal, uh, funny enough, is the creator of probability because of gambling. Ah, uh, that's great. Uh, the entire idea is uh, Pierre de Fermont uh, was... Uh, getting super pissed that he was losing in gambling, and so he 
hit up his uh, buddy, uh, Pascal, and effectively asked, you know, why am I losing all of this money in this game? Uh, given 24 rolls, bet against there being one with two sixes. So, again, Pascal built the probability of doing just that. Uh, and so, just to see that without doing the 24 rolls kind of thing, uh, we can see a, su uh, a few different things. What's the probability of rolling 1 6 in 2 rolls? Okay, that's 1 in 36. And uh, we're not probability class. We're, we're not statistics. We're computer programming. So, we're just kind of going through sort of the iterations. And so, not rolling 1 6 in 2 rolls. Uh, 35 so now not rolling 6 in 24 rolls is roughly speaking uh, 35 uh, over 36 to the 24th power or roughly speaking uh, 0 0.5 so again we could build this okay so we have 24 rolls that we need to do and we need to roll two sixes so let's take our probability and let's, again, use our dice roll. We're going to still keep this as 100 trials. We'll do this 100,000 times. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to keep an inner loop track. So uh, let's see. So we'll call this count equals 0 uh, while count is uh, less than 24, 24 rolls. OK. so. Uh, count will plus equal one. So in this case, uh, roll two dice. Uh, roll two dice. Die one. Die two. So just to kind of reiterate what they're looking for. <clears throat> uh, given 24 rolls, bet against there being one with two sixes. So I roll two sixes and i'm basically saying that out of these rolls uh two sixes will not happen okay so if die one equals six and die two equals six total is going to increment by one now this is where we get into the fact that we now can effectively quit this uh, iteration because if we think about sort of what's going on here if I roll two sixes in any of that 24 simulation it's done like oh six has happened don't need to check anymore so if that occurs we are going to break out of our secondary loop this is not going to exit out of the entire looping structure just our innermost loop and so the last little bit here we'll do is I is going to increment by one. Okay, so we run this. That's going to take some time because we're doing uh, 100,000 times uh, 24. So it ran uh, and, you know, sometimes that happens. But if we take our probability. Roughly speaking, you can see, oh, look at that. Roughly speaking, if we t did the Pascal, uh, Pierre de Fermont uh, gamble, uh, we have a 50% chance in our 24s. And again, we're again working off of this is one iteration of it. And then we're running through it a few different times to say, let me just concern, uh, confirm that that one time I did this wasn't a fluke. So again, if we ran through and just... Uh, let's see. Um, now I'm just going to do a little bit of printing, and this is mostly just to add some visualizations for our sake. Our, our sake. If uh, I modulo 1,000 or 10,000 is equal to zero, effectively every time we hit 10,000, uh, 10,000 iterations, print uh, iteration. Mm hmm. I. I like to do this when I have to deal with uh, long simulations because, again, it just tells me how far uh, off I am. So, uh, in this case, we run it again. Iteration 0, 10,000, 3,000, or 40,000, 50. So it's going through and it finished up because we never technically uh, hit 
100,000 or we never do the 100,000 comparison. That's perfectly fine. But once again, we can see that that probability is uh, very close to our uh, theoretical uh, model of roughly 50%. So some really fun things that we can do inside of uh, Python using something known as Monte Carlo.